Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft. Today, as you can see, I'm out in Kimber Camp uh, together with Cornelius. And uh, yeah, it's a windy weather today and the cold, but in here by the fire is warm and cozy. And uh, yeah, really nice to be out here. I'm actually starting a new series on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I want to make a video uh, every week for a while. And uh, one week it will be a series that is called uh, Did You Know? where I'll talk about uh, different subjects uh, that I have uh, noticed or have uh, been uh, curious about and uh, yeah and today I have a, a subject like that but the other video uh, I would like to try to come out in the forest and make videos as I usually do together with Cornelius and making uh, stuff out there so I hope uh, you'll enjoy these videos both uh, of them in the forest and out here in Kimber Camp. And sometimes it will be uh, Viking and sometimes it will be bushcraft. Uh, either ways. So, uh, yeah. I also have some uh, food I would like to eat out here. And um, it's not something I'm going to make over the fire. It's a cold dish, but it's something that I'm sure the Vikings had. And uh, it's a thing that we eat a lot of here in Denmark, especially up to Christmas. So yeah, I hope you uh, will find that interesting too. Yeah, and I hope uh, the wind noise in the microphone won't be uh, too much disturbing. I can't uh, eliminate all the wind out here, but uh, if it's going to be more windy or the wind will change, I can uh, shut the doors and maybe I'll do that a little bit later. But uh, until now it's okay out here. As uh, I said before, when the wind is coming from uh, the southeast, it's blowing right into my shelter. Otherwise, if it's south, north, west, doesn't matter, but this wind direction is uh, the most uh, annoying for me. So, yeah. Yeah, when we came out here, it was really cold out here in, 
uh, my shelter, but now I have lit some candles and especially fire here makes it very cozy to sit here and just enjoying uh, the warmth. And I told you about that uh, during the summer when I made this um, fireplace that in the winter it will become really in handy and uh, it sure is. I think it's about 8 degrees Celsius outside so in here is a warm cozy place and if I shut the doors I'm sure this shelter will be uh, warm perhaps even up to uh, 20 degrees. Yeah and um, beside the, the subject I'm going to talk about I have a new stuff. I have some new stuff I'd like to show you. Uh, you see here, I got this one on and also got yeah, a new knife I would like to talk about uh, from Roselli. It's an awesome knife. But uh, now, yeah, I think it's time for me to talk a little bit about the subject today. Yeah, and uh, the subject I'm going to talk about today is uh, did you know that uh, from uh, the turn of the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, there was a very important uh, change in the European history. Um, here in northern part of Europe, they didn't have access for um, copper and tin that was used to make bronze. Bronze is a metal that uh, has these two uh, materials in, and it's a, a little bit harder than uh, uh, copper and be used for di uh, different kinds of tools. And it was uh, in a very long period of time that the Bronze Age was. It was from 1800 years before Christ uh, till about uh, 400 years before Christ that uh, the Bronze Age was and then the Iron Age came uh, and it lasted until the Middle Age. Of course here in Denmark and Scandinavia we have the Viking Age uh, during that time too in the late part of the Iron Age. But what I'm going to tell you about is because there was no uh, uh, copper or tin here in the northern part of Europe, especially in Scandinavia, they had to uh, uh, trade with the uh, countries in the south about the Mediterranean area uh, because they could uh, extract uh, copper and tin and make bronze off of that. So there was a lot of trading uh, uh, from north to south, uh, not, not only uh, goods and so on, but also culture. There was a big culture exchange and uh, actually here in Scandinavia and Denmark especially uh, the society evolved uh, massively and uh, was, you can see in, uh, in um, the museums there's a lot of findings from that period uh, that was uh, extraordinary good uh, handcrafts and so on and uh, yeah, that was a very good time for uh, Denmark and Scandinavia because a lot of culture coming from uh, the south and also other stuff that they could trade but when the iron age came and that came because they found out they could extract iron from the ground or the rocks and so on and then the people here in the northern part of Europe in Scandinavia they didn't have to trade with uh, people from the south so uh, they actually uh, closed themselves in and uh, almost all the exchange of culture and trade uh, from north to south wasn't anymore. So uh, in that way uh, this country got a little bit isolated and uh, yeah I think that was uh, their intention and uh, perhaps that's uh, one of the reasons that uh, something like the Viking Age could evolve because uh, they have their own culture and it evolves into something that they didn't have in the south. So that I think that's a, a, a very interesting story and I read it uh, some months ago and I have uh, been longing to share this information with you. Uh, something uh, that small, uh, the turning from using copper to iron, uh, made a big difference here in Europe uh, regarding culture and uh, trading and so on. Of course then, uh, during the later time in the Iron Age from 400 uh, BC to uh, the Viking Age or longer onto the Middle Age, the trading uh, came up again and uh, one of the reasons the Vikings uh, were so successful was they were good traders and they could uh, use their ships to sail far away and trade with other countries, uh, England and uh, Europe and so on. And of course, we all know about the ratings and uh, there's other reasons for that. And uh, I've talked about that in uh, some other videos and I will not talk about that now.
these talks were used by Romans and uh, Celtic people, and uh, later on the Vikings used them too. The Celtic talks actually uh, disappeared in the migration uh, period, but uh, during the Viking Age, uh, these torch become very popular in the uh, in the northern part of um, Europe, uh, and especially made in silver. The torch was a status symbol and could uh, symbolize uh, wealth, uh, power, and so on, and was worn by the uh, chieftains, the jarls, and the kings, and uh, it was a symbol of greatness. And uh, one of the most uh, spectacular founds here in Denmark is this uh, the Tissue Ring. Uh, the Tissue Ring was found near a little lake called Tissue uh, in uh, the island of uh, Sealand here in Denmark. It was found in 1977 and uh, they say it's uh, from about the 900 centuries and it weighs about two kilos and it's pure gold and uh, you can, uh, I put a link in my video description, you can go in and uh, watch it uh, on the website the uh, National uh, museum and it's an awesome piece. You can see in this picture there's a lot of other findings from uh, Denmark and Scandinavia uh, both uh, neck uh, torch and also arm, arm rings that was very really, uh, popular during the Viking Age. Torch could be made out of gold, silver or even bronze as this one I have got from, uh, from a company called uh, Viking you can see here VKNG something like that. The uh, company is uh, located in France and I actually made a video uh, many years ago uh, I made a video about this uh, bracelet I have here you can see yeah you can see it in this picture and uh, this video that I made several years ago and at that time it was a small company that didn't have a lot of stuff on their website but now it's grown uh, to a very big company and they have all kind of stuff uh, Celtic, uh, Viking and medieval uh, stuff in their website. They have armor, swords, axes, shields, clothing, mugs, drinking horns and all kind of home decorations. And uh, yeah, you can see here it's a website with a lot of stuff on and um, a friendly guy from that company uh, asked me if I would like to uh, present some of their stuff on uh, my channel and I said yes to that. Especially this talk, uh, this ring, neck ring, I like it a lot and I have since I saw the tissue ring on the National Museum, I wanted something like this. And uh, yeah, I think it's so cool. And they uh, said it was a good idea that I could present that and uh, tell a little bit about the story about the talk. And beside that, I got this little skull, a uh, raven skull that I put on my drinking horn uh, back. You can see here, and I'm going to use that today uh, to celebrate uh, this event. On their website they have a blog that tells a lot of uh, the Viking Age and Celtic periods and medieval and uh, yeah it's very interesting and uh, you can go in there and watch their blog. I've uh, uh, subscribed to their newsletters and yeah I'm very surprised because once a week, I think it's once a week there's a new newsletter that tells about the newest uh, discovery from findings all over here in Europe and uh, some other stuff about the Viking Age and so on. I find it very interesting and they write a lot of things that I didn't know uh, so uh, I can uh, definitely recommend you to go in and uh, watch the blog and uh, subscribe to their newsletters and uh, you'll find some very interesting information about this period in uh, European history. Yeah, Viking is a great company and I can uh, only recommend you to go into the website and see what they can offer you. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, have more stuff from that company and uh, yeah along the way I'll talk about it again uh, but uh, yeah but yeah this was a little uh, story about uh, the Bronze Age, uh, Iron Age talks uh, from that period and uh, other stuff about uh, a great company. And talking about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age out in my area where my shelter is there's actually a lot of uh, barrel mounds uh, one uh, not more than a hundred meters uh, away from my shelter you can see here on this uh, drone footage there you can see it on the right a little barrier mount uh, from the Bronze Age or the Iron Age and um, yeah this is the area where my little forest is located it's in a, a land with uh, fields that the farmers are working on. You can see here they mustn't uh, uh, plow near the uh, barrel mound so 
there's a little uh, ring around it. And you can see beautiful area. A little dirt road I'm uh, driving uh, to come to my little shelter. And uh, down here, there's a little forest. And uh, yeah, here my little shelter is located. Right there. Now I'm going to show you my new knife and uh, talk about that. Uh, I hope you find that interesting too. Yeah, and it's this uh, knife from Roselli, uh, hunting knife called Nalle. And uh, my version is the one with the reindeer. You can see here on the sheath and uh, on the little toggle and uh, on the top of the knife, there's a little bit of reindeer uh, antler on that. And uh, yeah, I'm very fond of that. It's not a cheap knife. Uh, it's actually the most expensive knife I ever had, but it is a special knife. It has uh, what they call uh, ultra high carbon steel and it's a steel that uh, Roselli have developed over many years and uh, yeah but before I talk about that uh, I made a little customization of it you can see here uh, my other knife from Roselli I love this and uh, yeah I think one of the things I uh, like about this knife besides it has a, a sheet of uh, curly birch and leather is also the reindeer fur that is on. So I customized it a little bit, my little Roselli, and made it like this. And I think it looks cool. I put a little bit of reindeer fur on the sheet. Yeah, so now you can see they look a little bit alike. I like that. And uh, yeah, I hope Roselli accept that I customized this awesome knife. Uh, this uh, tells me that it is my personal life now. And the secret behind Roselli's uh, ultra high carbon steel, superior cutting and performance and sharpness lies in the small carbides formed in the steel. The carbides themselves are almost as hard as diamonds and make this blade extremely sharp. And uh, I can tell you it's a really sharp knife and uh, yeah. They asked me if I would like to have something great and I said I would like Kimber here and uh, you can have that on your knife I think it's for free uh, engrave your name or something like that uh, but of course I will have um, Kimber on mine you can have it too if you want to that's okay with me but uh, for me it's a very awesome knife uh, I love it a lot and uh, yeah I'm going to use that as my new Viking knife of course uh, I'm very grateful uh, Roselli wants to uh, offer me this uh, very expensive knife and I will cherish it uh, for many years to come so um, yeah and again uh, if you go into the website and buy for more than 100 euros you'll get 15% in discount so use that and uh, get your own knife a lot of people haven't got uh, money for this but they had a lot of other knives that is really awesome also uh, ultra high carbon steel knife that is uh, uh, not so pricey as this one. Of course with the, um, the sheet of uh, curly birch and uh, leather and the steel uh, it's going to be a knife that is a little bit expensive but also something you can have uh, all your life. And uh, here you can see the specs about this knife for those of you who are interested in that. Yeah, and today I'm going to uh, use my uh, knife for the first time because I'm uh, going to make a little, um, a little knife, a little butter knife out of this uh, piece of wood. Uh, and that's because uh, the thing I'm going to eat, I need a butter knife for that. So uh, this will be my first task uh, to make this little knife.
So you can see it's very sharp. I have to be careful not to cut myself. And uh, Roselli writes that their high carbon steel knife, especially this hunting knife, is so uh, hard that you can use it for uh, cutting bones from deers and so on. I'm not a hunter so I won't try that, but it tells a little bit about the hardness of this steel and uh, how good it is. Yeah, this will do for my next project, making my food. Yeah, a little bit of onion, a piece of ray bread, and uh, in here I have this special thing, pickled herring, uh, raw fish uh, that is pickled, that I put on. But uh, I like to come a little of a little bit of butter on first, and that's why I have to use make this. And uh, Cornelius is very interesting. You can't see him, but he. I don't. Sh I'm not sure he'd like this, but I do. So yeah, here you can see some butter on and then we'll take this pickle herring yep and uh, cut it in two I think this yeah and then a little bit of onion on, if I can. Not much, a little bit. Oh yeah. This will be enough. And the rest of this I just throw out. And then uh, also very important some salt on. Yeah. A little bit of salt. Oh yeah. Do you think it looks delicious? Us here in Denmark eat this a lot. I like some um, curry dressing on, but of course the Viking didn't have access to that, so I'll eat it like this, and this is also good. And um, yeah, I use my little uh, my little owl here or eating pick for this. Yeah, and for my meal today, I have a, a special beer. Made here in Denmark called Limfjord's Porter. Uh, Limfjord is the it's a fjord that I live uh, nearby here in the northern part of Denmark and uh, a porter is a dark beer for those who doesn't know that. So yeah. Let's see. Don't want to use my knife for this. So I'll use my axe. Uh, this is my Viking eggs. Yep. Right there. 
Oops. And I got my drinking horn over here. Yeah. It's a very dark beer. I like that. So, um, it's cool, everyone. Mm. And now for this. Mm. Isn't it cozy out here by the fire? Yeah, I love this place. Mm. And Cornelius, eat this thing. And Cornelius is eating uh, the last part of the butter. He likes that. Isn't that right, Cornelius? Yeah, you like butter? Mm -hmm. But not uh, pickle herring. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> this is a, a dish that that Viking probably ate a lot of and could bring with them on travels and so on. It can, very delicious. I could take a snaps for this, and um, perhaps I should. Now I have my drinking bowl. Yeah, this little one. And um, yeah, I got this. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. It's not a snaps, but a, what we call a bitter. And drum. So yeah, yeah, it's cool. You usually drink snaps for this, but this is just as good. And thank you. Ah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Canelius? It's nothing for you. No? <laughs> you like it? Well, I can give you a little piece, see if that's something for you. Let's see if Canelius like this. Yeah, he's eating it. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, guys. Yeah. He likes it. You like me? Yeah. I don't know if his stomach can take it so I'll eat the rest myself. Oh yeah, this was really a delicious meal. Good beer. Yeah. I promised you to uh, show you this. I uh, got it from a friend in the, the Netherlands, uh, Benjamin, and uh, him and uh, one of his friends Meno, I think it's called, was out here uh, visiting me in uh, Kimber Camp and they have a lot of gifts, uh, among that some uh, nuts and uh, chaga they have found, uh, some cookies from uh, the Netherlands and this uh, one, yeah. I'll bring you a little bit closer and I'll talk, tell you a little story about this. Yeah, uh, it's something called Utrechtjet. It's uh, Dutch, I don't uh, read Dutch but he told me, Benjamin, that this this uh, man on this picture, and uh, this is what they were called. They were um, they were collecting the timber from the the stranded ships uh, out of sea on the beaches in uh, in Holland or uh, Netherlands. And uh, yeah, this is a funny story because, uh, and it's actually the same in Denmark. Uh, they lit fires on the the beaches uh, during the night and. Uh, People on the ships thought it was uh, 
uh, something they knew and uh, <clears throat> perhaps a harbor or something, then they uh, got that direction and uh, of course they uh, uh, hit the ground and, uh, and the ship went down. And so these people could uh, collect the timber that was uh, from the ship. Uh, and there's the same story here in Denmark uh, many, many years ago. Uh, I think it was Stygge Kumpen that made the same, uh, the same things here in Denmark, lit uh, fires on the beaches. Uh, a little uh, funny story, and I think this, he said that this uh, name uh, is the name of these people that make this. So I'm very grateful, Benjamin. Ameno, and it was a great time out here in Kimber Camp. Uh, hope to see you again another time. Thank you very much. A very delicious meal, I, I'll say, and Cornelius was uh, fond of it too. Now he's eating my uh, butter knife, and that's okay. Uh, he loves to steal my firewood, and this time he's allowed to do that. But uh, now I think it's time for a coffee. Yeah. Do, 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 do. some water in. And some coffee. Good strong coffee. I just have to wait. Doesn't forget the salt. I get a lot of questions about the salt. It removes the bitterness from the coffee. So try it on your coffee. It can be used for many, all kinds of coffee making. Some pipe from Ruits. Uh, I have link in my um, on my website. You can see here Viking symbol. I love it. And now it's cooking. I'll take a little bit up here. Now the coffee is finished.
pipe of tobacco. And uh, these videos are from Kimbercam where I make my series Did You Know will be a little bit shorter than my usual videos. Today I'm uh, going to make a normal video I think, but um, there will be about 10 minutes I think uh, out from Kimbercam and the other ones normal length. Yeah. I hope you enjoy these videos. I'm uh, almost uh, 99,000 subscribers now and it's so awesome. The last couple of weeks it's been very good for me. Uh, I got two videos that have been a great hit and I've got a lot of new subscribers. And welcome to all of you new subscribers. I hope you enjoy my videos and uh, look back. I have almost 400 videos you can uh, watch if you want to do that. I have some playlists. I made a playlist where I have all my Viking videos and a playlist with all my bushcraft videos. So um, yeah, but um, I want to uh, gain the last thousand subscribers, so I reach the the one hundred thousand uh, soon, hopefully before Christmas. And then I have my big giveaway where I have two of my iron fireballs. Uh, I also have a collaboration with uh, uh, Orselli that will. Uh, donate something for that and I'm sure that Philip from uh, Blue Folk also would like to uh, donate something for my giveaway and a lot of other stuff uh, something I made myself so please share my videos and like them uh, it's a big milestone for me and uh, I'm looking forward to that for a long time Yeah, folks, this is all for now. I hope you enjoy this little video from Kimber Camp uh, together with Cornelius and me. And uh, yeah, and enjoy my little new series. Did you know? I'm going to talk about subjects I find interesting and something new I learned and want to share with you. So uh, I hope you will follow me on this uh, little adventure too. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day out here warm and cozy by the fire and uh, good coffee, nice food and so on, nice pipe of tobacco and also new knife I got and uh, of course my talk, my uh, neck ring from Viking and all that, yeah. 
Then I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah, do for the real kick. You want to see for wins? Yeah. see for win. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye, Sue. So. Yeah, so if you bye bye to all our friends. Yeah.